teach us what thus saith the Lord. And God, we thank you for how you have kept us throughout this week. You've been faithful. God, you have watched us travel and you've kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, we have the right use of our minds. We thank you for your awesome grace. Lord, we pray right now that as we we move towards your word, that your spirit will direct us. That your spirit will arrest our attention. That we would be not just hearers, but doers of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. God, we love you. Have your way in this place. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. If you'll stand with me as we will read a portion of Scripture, Second, First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve, one verse, verse eighteen. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse eighteen says, "But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body." just as he desired. You may be seated. This morning we will continue in on this series, Right Living in a Wrong World. And we are here in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, where we're talking about the gifts most of you all, when you think about the church, what is it that you think about? We get that image. When you think about the church, I want you to look at the screen. What do you think about? What is the church? Now, most of you all picked the one on the left. You picked what is known as the church, correct? But the question is, is that the church? If you pick the one on the right, you are probably more accurate. The church is not often looked at as a body, but from God's perspective, the church is a body. The picture on the left, the picture of rising star, is a building. <laughs> the building is not the church. The ecclesia, the church, is those who have been called out of darkness and placed into the light of the sun. The picture on the right depicts a body with all of its nuances, and I've been doing a lot of research, Dr. Quirks. This week on the body, the human body, I have an image here of a skeletal system. Now, I know probably you all are going to be thinking, this is stuff that you should have already known, but some of this stuff I just did not know. I knew about the skeletal system, I knew about the circulatory system, but the more I studied and, and researched, the more in the body, major structures in the body, in the body. I'll name a few. The circulatory system, it transports nutrients, waste, and hormones, and gases. The digestive system, that's the mouth, throat, esophagus, 
It extracts and absorbs nutrients from food. It removes waste and remains and maintains water and chemical balances. The endocrine system, the excretory system, the immune system, the muscular system, and you can research all of these different systems on your own, but when you look at the body, the body is a complex, it is it's, it's, it's almost unfathomable when you think about all that goes into the body. And the more that I research, the more
significance within the body of Christ. God just doesn't add pieces of add bones just for nothing. Every bone has a purpose within the body of Christ. Every believer has a purpose within the body of Christ. Every believer is a gift to the body. And yet,
uses the word body some 18 times, so he's trying to make a larger point about the church, which is his body. And so what is the point that Paul is trying to make here? There is only one body that Christ is concerned about, and that is his body. Where he is the head. And so when we think about the church as a body, with Christ as a head, that means that what we do should, 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 should uh, we should be responding to what comes from the head. Every decision that we make ought to be a response as to what God has said. And believe you me, God is still speaking and he's speaking most certainly in this day through his word. So we were all baptized. Once we responded to the gospel, he placed us into his body and he does it with purpose. There are no parts in the body where you just kind of sitting around
fulfilling their purpose in the church. You know why? Because people think that it's all about them. We'll see this as we move forward. Every part is necessary in the body because every part is necessary is important that we understand how we relate to one another. So Paul now continues to use his metaphor of the body as parts talking to other parts. It's how we relate to one another. Look at this in verse 14. He says, for the body is not one part, but many. Now, this is interesting here in 15 and 16, parts are going to be talking to parts. Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> says, if the foot says, if the foot says, I am not the hand, so the foot is talking. That may be where the expression talk to the hand came from. <laughs> if, hypothetically, if the foot says, because I am not the hand, I am not part of the body, is it not for this reason any less part of the body? That's like the foot is looking at the hand and desiring. Y'all get that? The foot is saying to the hand, ultimately the foot is saying to God, why did you make me a foot? I would rather be a hand. <laughs> That's ultimately what it's saying. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less part of the body? The, the answer is, it's, it's the hypothetical. The, the answer God has arranged 
This is a restatement of verse 14. He says in verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. Verse 19, if they were all one part, what would the body be? But now there are many parts, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. <clears throat> On the contrary, it is much truer that the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. <laughs> you know, we look at parts of the body like this where I'm up in front of people and you say, man, I would, I would love to do that. Well, well, why? Listen, where has he called you? The weaker parts, quote unquote, are necessary. You ever, uh, everybody take off your shoe and put your foot up and let me all see, see your pinky toe.
you're not a mistake, that means you have you have specific significance in the economy of God. Listen, he loved you so much that he would send his son to die in your place. And upon doing that, when you respond to his grace gift, he baptizes you into the body of Christ, the amazing creation that God has made. What is man? That God has made him Lord. He made man Lord and God. It's an amazing creation. Our God is amazing. And listen, we get our thoughts, we get our significance from the head. Who is Christ. So as we close, I want you to just listen to the words of this song. We enjoy the gift that God has given to this body. And if you're here and you want to be a part of this body, not this building, the church, not necessarily rising star, but the universe of God that he died for. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Paul says, what I received, I pass on to you of first importance, and that is Jesus Christ died on the cross according to the scriptures. He was buried. God raised him from the dead according to the scriptures. You respond to the good news of the gospel. If you're here and it is your desire to respond to the gospel, at the end of service, if you've already prayed that prayer, if you want to pray that prayer out, close in prayer, but I want I want to meet you back in the conference room. But I want you to really think about the words to this song and think about how amazing God is that He would place us into His body.
place the stars in the sky and know them by name. The beautiful thing is, if he knows the stars, he, he knows your name. He knows you by name. So if it's your desire to be a part of the body of Christ, I want you to come forward. If it's your desire to be a part of this local assembly, body of Christ, you can come forward also. If it's your desire to meet us at the end of service in the conference room, we'll have people in the back who would love to meet with you and talk with you. If you need prayer, we can pray with you. God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. To help us to see ourselves through your eyes. Help us to see the significance that we play within the body of Christ. And help us to use our gifts to build up the body that is your church. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. All the saints said, Amen.